Holy Ghost. Now, wait a minute. We, we're, we're all familiar with water baptism, but what is this baptism of the Holy Ghost? Because John said there's somebody else coming after me, and we know that that be Jesus. Is that right? Yeah. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Somebody always said, what do you mean that fire? When you get the Holy Ghost, you would understand what the fire means. <laughs> Hallelujah. You get the Holy Ghost, you would understand. You won't, be, you won't be asking me what it is. You'll be telling me what it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Glory be to the king. Now, for us believers having the Holy Spirit within us, we understand what it means to feel the power of God. If you ever want to go by any kind of feeling, that, that's a good one. That's a good one right there. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, some people say, boy, when Pastor Dow lay hands on me, Lord, I mercy. All kind of stuff start taking place. Stuff I ain't never felt and stuff. The brothers lay hands on me, man. And then they go, man, come think about it. All of them anointed. They all got problems. They don't say that, though. They say, boy, those folks are something, though. Stuff happened. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, the Holy Spirit in us confirms what Jesus said to the apostles. Amen. He said he was going to manifest himself to us in a way that he wasn't going to do it to the world. Is that right? Jesus did. Amen. He says in John 14, 15, because the world is not going to know, but we're going to know. Jesus said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. I don't know why, you know, you can't get people to keep that Sabbath day. Well, somebody say, well, you know, people, they love Jesus. I tell you, I let him handle that. I worry about me, myself, and I, and those who hear me. Isn't that right? Save yourselves from his untoward generation. But Jesus said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. Is that right? He said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comfort. You know, we all need some comfort at times. I'm just life trials and this tribulation. Is, I'm telling you, we need some comfort at times. And that's just the truth. That is the truth. Hallelujah. Is that right? Look at this. That he may abide with you some of the time. It didn't say sometime, didn't it? All of the time. You hear that? Meaning that this comforter, once you receive him, he's going to be with you all of the time. All the time. Hallelujah. He may abide with you forever. Look what it identifies him as. Even the spirit of truth. Now who is that that said I am the way? I am the truth and I am the life. Huh? Isn't that something? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. And the word became flesh. And he dwelt among us. And we beheld him, handled him, his only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing how that word fits together? That word just fit right on together, don't it? Hallelujah. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. See, it's impossible for the world to receive. You can't have the world in you and receive the Holy Spirit. You've got to repent of the things of the world. Things of the past and stuff. Because God would not dwell in an unclean temple. Is that what the Bible said? The Holy Spirit would not dwell in an unclean temple. How do you clean yourself up? By repentance. And submitting yourself to God. Then he comes and he fills you up. That's the part he said, well, I would not leave you comfortless. You know what I mean? Many times when you're not born again and all you've been used to is the world, you get all that junk out of you, you got a, 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 a place of void there. You got, man, there ain't nothing there. You empty. And all the stuff you used to have security in and trust in, you don't have it no more when you repent and, and willfully turn away from it. And so Jesus said, don't worry about it. I got something. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, but it seeth him not. See, that's the reason why the world can't receive because they don't see him. Neither know him. But look at this. But you know him. You hear that? For he dwell with you and shall be in you. See, that's the key. That's the key. That's the difference right there. Y'all understand that? For he dwell with you and he shall be where? In you. Not in the place, not in the wall, not in the mountain, not in the hill. 
Not in the earthquake, not in the valley, not in the storm, but he's going to be where? In you. Because you are the temple of God. Amen? Ah, watch this now. So we are required by God, listen to this, to build up ourselves in the most holy faith. And that's one thing that I have uh, noticed with uh, spirit-filled people, holy spirit-filled people, that they had not been spending too much time doing that. Yeah. You understand that? We are required by God to build up ourselves in the most holy faith. You hear that? We are required to pray always in the spirit. Is that right? Those Y'all familiar with the scripture, right? Huh? We, always, we are required to pray with the understanding. With the mind, is that right? Sing in the spirit. Sing with the understanding, is that right? We are required by scriptures to stay charged up just like we would charge up a battery. Is that right? See, a battery is just not going to run to infinity. Is that right? Even in a natural battery, is just not going to run to infinity. Isn't that right? A battery in itself went through continual use, wears down, and it has to be charged in order to function properly. Is that right? Amen. Amen. So the Bible teaches us to stay charged up in God, and we're going to look at this. All right? In ministry, many of you over the years have seen me preach, lay hands on the sick, um, uh, praying for someone, receive the Holy Spirit, you yourself done the same exact thing. And many of you have seen the after effects when I get finished preaching a message or getting finished praying for the sick or casting out devils. Y'all seen after effect, amen? It, it looks like I just ran a marathon. You know, when I get finished with everything and I'm just sitting here kind of like in drone stage. You know what's going on? See, all this time I've been dispensing the power of God. All this time. Why? Because where's the Holy Spirit at according to what we just read? He's in us. And in order for people to understand what's going on, the the Holy Spirit has to be dispensed. Amen? Because that word, the Holy Spirit, is God. Last manifestation of God on this earth that we're going to see in this realm. So all this time, Holy Spirit has been it's dispensing the power of God because of the word. Remember, just like uh, the lady that touched the hem of Jesus' garment. The Bible said that virtue went out of him. And he said, who touched me? And, and they, of course, the disciples said, then wait a minute. Why you, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody touching you. You're going through the middle of this crowd right here, and everybody's touching you. He said, uh-uh. Somebody drew some spirit out of me why because it's not by power nor by might but by my spirit this is God's spirit God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth can't do away we got to have all of it now we got to put that line up on line precept on precept here a little and there a little isn't that right Remember, and, and God moved. The Spirit of God moved. At the beginning 